Now, there's some other really interesting behavior when you talk about old joints and newly forming joints, because a newly formed joint is usually going to have, um, it's going to be acted upon by the stress field of the older joint. So let's look at what some of that might look like. If this is your original joint, and when it was formed, remember, that means that the local lowest direction of stress was here and here, because that's how tensile jointing occurs. But that rock can eventually be moved, it could be in an overturned bed, and the environment can change such that the orientation of the pressure and the stress that's applied will change. And so let's say that now the whole formation is experiencing this remote stress. Well, it's going to form joints along this plane, but when those joints try to intersect with these joints, these joints are going to represent a different local sigma 3 field. Remember, that is your direction of least stress, the direction um, that's usually perpendicular to the plane of a joint. So if, let's say, your local sigma 3 is along the fracture face, then you're going to develop this little hook because as it tries to come through here, the local stress field will change and it will want to be perpendicular to your sigma 3 direction. See how it will hook around and then terminate in that older joint and we call that hooking. But let's say that that local stress field right around your joint is actually perpendicular to the face of your fracture. Well then, as this fracture propagates this way, or this way we watch it, it comes down and it wants to match the local stress field instead of the remote stress field. And so it hooks around this way, but we don't call that hooking anymore. It begins to have a sigmoidal look because you're usually going to have a joint set. So let's say this is another older joint, and it's going to create this little S shape because it has to conform to the local stress created by those old joints. So this kind of behavior is distinctive, and it can help you recognize the order in which the jointing took place. Because oftentimes when you look at it, obviously it's not going to be as apparent as it is in a cartoon. But if you look for these little clues, you're going to know that this joint could not be older because it couldn't have been affected that way by an, a younger joint. So you understand that they were created at different times and what that means. Now, the next thing that we can look at is something called joint spacing that you usually see in sedimentary beds. And joint spacing d develops because there is what we call a stress shadow around joints. Now, joints usually form in response to tensile stress. So what happens is the tensile stress on a bed will break open a joint, and then it will be relieved somewhat. But as you move away from that joint, the relief experienced from that break is going to taper off. This little purple shadow that I've drawn here around the tear is meant to represent the shadow in which the stress has been released. So there's not going to be another fracture or another joint within that shadow. However, when you move outside that shadow, another one may form. And that's why the spacing tends to be somewhat regular. And there are things that regulate how wide or how narrow the spacing in these beds are. A lot of it has to do with the thickness. A thinner bed is going to have less strength to resist the uh, tensile stress, and then it's going to have closer spacing because your stress shadow is going to be very narrow. So you can expect a thinner bed, all things being equal, to have a narrower spacing between your joints. The lithology of the bed has a lot to do with it because that's going to decide the value of the Young's modulus for that particular material. How much stretching or elastic behavior is that material capable of? And uh, you're going to find that different beds are vastly different in their composition. And then in, uh, related to that is the material's tensile strength the ability of that material to resist tensile stress. So that's an intrinsic property of a particular bed. And then, obviously, the stress field that we're talking about is going to affect how narrow or how wide the, the spacing is. If there's more stress, we're going to expect there's going to be narrower spacing between these um, joints. And knowing that makes it easier for us to quantify joint spacing and what it means in terms of the history of the rock. So we want to make sure we take all those things into account. And lastly, we want to say 
why would we study joints? Because you want to have some motivation for looking at joints, which might seem kind of removed from reality. But honestly, since the crust is full of jointing, it's a very important study. There's engineering and hydraulic reasons why. I mean, if you're going to build something, you want to know the strength of the area, and the jointing can tell you a lot about that. If you're doing mining or quarry operations, you're going to want to know if it's a feasible place to do that kind of uh, groundbreaking. Is it safe to have mines uh, digging into the earth there, or do the joint systems make the properties of the material a lot weaker than they would be otherwise? Groundwater and aquifers have a lot to do with uh, their, their porosity and permeability are going to be affected by the joints, the joint systems, the interconnectedness, the movement that's experienced. It's all important. When you talk about toxic waste sites, you need to know about the jointing in the area. Is it safe to put toxic waste there? Or are there joints that create openings that's going to let that flow? There's academic reasons, and that's what we've been talking about throughout this lecture. All the historical stresses and orientations, your events, tectonic and otherwise, your emplacements, your igneous events, your lithological properties, and why they create the different kinds of joints that they create, all of these are reasons why we might want to study joints in the field. And with that being said, next time we will get into more detail about these joints and exactly why they typically form and under what circumstances.